Why should I give you these tools? <sighs> Off the cuff, didn't know whether I was going to do it or not. And I find myself sat in front of a camera, <laughs> shivering with nerves. <laughs> this is something I care about, so it's, the nerves just flooded in. Last night was terrible. <laughs> Did you sleep all right? Oh. No, no. When you do truly care about something and you, you, you know, you want it to be right then. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me your name. Uh, my name's Kurt. I'm 34. I live in a tiny little village in Lincolnshire in England. I've been here about six years. When I first came here, there was a shell of a building and I've slowly turned it into a workshop, uh, using as many recycled materials as I can to keep costs down. And I'm at this point now where it's just about usable. From when I was seven, eight years old, I was into making stuff. Anything I could find, I'd turn it into something. Every Christmas it was Meccano and Lego. And I'd build them on Christmas Day and I'd be taking them back apart on Boxing Day to make something different. From there on, when I was at school, the only lesson I enjoyed was sort of design technology and in the workshops. It's the only subject I, I got a decent grade in. Uh, from there, I went on to college. Uh, I did engineering, but it was only in the workshops one day a week. By this point, I'd bought my own real small lathe, just the cheapest I could buy, um, and I was doing stuff at home in my bedroom, teaching myself to weld, which my mum wasn't too pleased about <laughs> at the time, but she let me get away with it. From a large family, I'm the youngest of eight. Most of us are actually self-employed, like I am. Most of us are creative as well. Um, I've got a sister who does uh, furniture and sells it at a small shop she's got. Sort of reclaim furniture, repainting and stuff like that. My mum was a, a seamstress for many, many years. Um, she's fantastic at making clothing and uh, recovering furniture and things like that. From then, I left college early because there just wasn't the amount of work on the machines that I wanted to do. Um, I, went, I, I got a job, uh, well, I got a few jobs doing various things. And I kind of came back to engineering after a few years off. It wasn't until I moved here sort of six years ago that I really built a proper workshop, got some decent tools together and started making things and started a small business. It earns me uh, enough money to live on, basically. My business, the old Iron Co, it's called. I do a range of things. I started blacksmithing using YouTube as a guide. I learned how to uh, heat metal, forge it, Built my own forge, uh, managed to get hold of an anvil, uh, made various bits and pieces. People saw the stuff, started buying stuff. Then I got an interest in wood, so I started mixing the wood and the metal, um, making slightly nicer bits. But from day one, it's always been about the machine and it's always been the tools that interested me. The older, the better. And what other people see as junk, <laughs> I see treasure, as you'll tell from my machinery. But yeah, it just progressed it into the point where I didn't want to work for anyone else. I didn't want to make other people money. I wanted to make things for people that made people happy. Do it at the lowest price I could. So I use all recycled materials wherever I can. I think it makes better work as well. I mean, I've made thousands of pieces over the years for all different kinds of people. Some of it for money, some of it for not. And it tends to be that every new piece I make is my favorite piece of work. It's that little bit better than the last, and I've learned something new, and I've used skills I've learned, most of it off YouTube. I mean, I've never, I've never had a mentor, I've never been taught by anyone. This is just what I'm picking up, teaching myself. Every new piece is, is the new one. <laughs> I find working with wood, it's, it's just the natural beauty in the wood that you can, you can bring out, adding different materials in there, sitting in next to brass is a favorite of mine. Metal-wise, I think it is the, the machinery. I'm a real machinery man. And getting to use the, the big mill or the lathe, I'm in here all the time. This is my life, 24-7. I've just got an absolute passion for it. Favourite tool? That's a tough one. The lathe, 
She's a little beauty. She was going to scrap, um, and I saved her. 1938 Harrison flat belt drive. Absolute pleasure to, to use. She's a bit noisy on back gears, but that's par for the course. It's actually in pretty good nick. Didn't come with any tooling as such. Didn't have a tool post. Um, so that's another homemade item. Fully adjustable for height and angle. Again, scrap materials. And that was made entirely on the lathe. Um, using a, a milling attachment that I made, again, on the lathe. But she does some good work. Bearings are a little bit tired, but no, it's fantastic to use and a, a pretty capable machine as well for its size. And the mill, which I haven't had that long, absolute beast. Way too big for the room, but I'll, I'll never need another one. Finding tooling for it is near impossible, so I find I'm, I'm making tools as I go along. Okay, this milling head, because the machine, it's a 50 taper machine, which Around where I live, all this stuff was scrapped in years ago. Um, people are using smaller machines now, so tooling is nigh on impossible to find for this machine. Um, I've got one arbor that's bent. Um, you can still do rough work, but nothing fantastic. But the milling head, um, I made using the, the spindle out of a, my old Chinese lathe, which is nearly 20 years old now. Um, machine the rest on the mill using my boring head that I made. Um, it tilts to all angles. It's fantastic for fly cutting. Um, it does need a VFD and a, a three phase motor but I'm sure I'll, I'll pick something up in time. But it's a fantastic little bit of kit and uh, I've done an awful lot of work with it in the short time that I've had it made. But yeah, getting there slowly. But any chance to use any of the machinery and I'm on it whether I'm being paid or not. Uh, materials wise, you can quite often find me in a skip. Old bolts, um, bits of scrap metal, all sorts of stuff. Well, to them it's trash, to me it's treasure. I've made some nice pieces out of railway bolts. People seem to like them, so as long as I can find them by the side of the train tracks, chucked in a ditch, uh, I'll keep making stuff out of them. It's got to the point now where a lot of my friends just bring their junk round because they know I'm going to turn it into something. And people, a lot of the little jobs I get are people bringing things that are broken and they think maybe be on repair. So I'll, uh, I'll fix them up and send them back in good condition. As far as the tools go, they do say a bad workman blames his tools. But when you haven't got any tools to use, it's kind of difficult to produce good work. Like I've said, a lot of my tools um, I do make myself, if I can, um, but when it comes down to the more intricate measuring tools, micrometers, gauges, there's just no money in the bank for that. Um, and I am getting there and I, I scour jumble sales and yard sales and whatever I can. And when I've got the spare money, it goes on tools. But these things ain't cheap and they ain't easy to come by either. Favourite food? Um, No. <laughs> Food wise, I tend to eat what people bring me because they know I'll be in the shed and they know I won't have had anything to eat all day because I've been in the shed. So uh, I've got friends that bring me fish and chips every now and again. Uh, my next door neighbour brings me an apple a day and on a Friday I get a, a ham bun off him as well. He looks after me. I've never asked for anything off anyone ever. Um, friends have helped me out here and there building the building the workshop and helping me shift stuff, but um, I'm independent when it comes to, you know, making stuff happen. This is the first time I've ever actually asked for help, I guess. One of my brothers is also into push bikes, so we get into plenty of trouble together. The older the better, the dirtier the better, and uh, we give new life to them, really. Current project, a bit of fun. Um, 1950s rally with a strimmer engine attached to it, made to look vintage um, as an engineering exercise, but it does about 25 mile an hour, so it's, it's a pretty good ride. No brakes as yet. <laughs> we'll see what happens there. Um, but out here in the country, you can get away with stuff like that. But yeah, she's coming on. She's a little beaut. As much as I can on the bike, as much as I've had time for, I've, I've built one off. 
Um, the grips are oak and brass. Um, all the engine mounting on the front is just scrap materials using the lathe in the mill. Uh, mud guards, mud guard mounts. It's all scrap materials. Uh, machine with what machinery I've got. The seat, that was interesting. It was black. I discovered if I took a, a grinder to it, I could uh, make it brown, which is the colour I wanted. So I saved a few quid there. Um, and she's ready for paint. She should look pretty tasty when she's finished. Yeah, design wise, a lot of the time it's just what materials I've got, what I've scavenged and what I can make out of it. I'll find a nice lump of wood and I'll, I'll see something that can be made out of it and it goes from there really. Um, it's not often people ask me for something that I don't want to make, but it does happen. Either I don't like the design or I don't like the, what, what they want to do with the materials, I think they can be used in a better way. Um, so I will turn down the job <laughs> if, I, if I think it's not going not gonna to turn out nice. But most of the time people come to me with a, a real wide open brief, say I just want one of these, make it in your style and I go from there and I've, I've never so far had anyone that's been unhappy with something I've made them. So a lot of my work is made from what materials I've got. The work I've got here sort of ranges from the lamp was a request in a, a Western American style. The headdress as well, that's all stainless with an oak base. The railway bolts. The timber is actually out of uh, a manor house not too far from here, which that's bound to be a 200 year old piece of timber. I've got two bowls made out of a tree that was fallen in the woods. And then onto tooling since I've got my machines. Just to save money really, I've got a boring head, a jig for the lathe, so I could, uh, that's before I got my mill, so I could do light milling in the lathe. A small machinist level, which is adjustable. My favourite tool here, which is a, a tap follower, which gets used every single day. Fly cutter, ball turner. Bit of an old gearbox turned into a lamp. The odd bits of blacksmithing. Yeah, a, a good variety, I think. If I was to receive this box of tools, the difference it would make from my work now, it'd be sort of night and day, really. Just being able to turn to that tool to measure something, to, to set up a job, instead of the struggle when you ain't got it. I mean, you can use the old methods, but they take time. Just such a huge, huge difference. To advance my skills as a machinist, which is really the main direction I want to want to take my little business, it just it just skyrocket because um, I've got I've got the tools of the trade um, to do what I need to do. Because just being in the shed is where I want to be. Uh, spend as much time here as I can. So I've got a shop dog, like uh, a lot of fellas on YouTube have. Is uh, we coming up 11 at Christmas. He wants so much as, as a rescue dog as I stole him. Uh, he was chained up to a, a scrap car in someone's backyard years ago and uh, he was in a terrible mess. I rescued him with a set of bolt croppers and uh, he's been my best mate ever since. You can usually find him sat in all the uh, metal chippings on the floor of the shed. That's his favourite place to sit and he potters about and uh, he keeps me in check. I don't tend to plan anything at all. Work-wise, I very rarely draw anything out. It evolves as I'm doing it. Um, I think that's where some of my particular style comes from. The fact that you start with, with whatever material you've got and it evolves sort of into what you've got in your head. And I do like stuff on spare at the moment as well. I don't plan holidays, I don't plan days out. If something turns up, and I've, I've got the time to do it, I'll do it. Um, a bit like this film? A bit like this film, yeah. This is like the first time I'm like, begging, I guess. <laughs> Am I worthy of this tool chest? I feel I've worked hard enough to receive a gift like this. It has been years of hard work, 99% of it on my own, um, literally backbreaking. And it's not, I mean, I get to receive the tools if I was to, to receive the gift. 
but the aim is really to to pass to pass on the wealth really I want to build the business to a point where I can take youngsters in maybe people that have had a bit of bit of trouble and not the best start in life and give them a bit of confidence and say look you can do this you know you, if you put your mind to something you can realize your potential I want to provide a stress-free environment for people where they can come in and there'll be no charge and just give them a taste of of doing something for the self and trying to better themselves in some way I suppose. The tools out of the chest I'd be using daily um, I doubt there'd be a thing in there that wouldn't find a use in this workshop. I've currently got one micrometer, um, I've got a couple of sets of Chinese calipers which, well the Chinese calipers, we all know about them. All these tools, the precision aspect of it is just going to send my work to the next level basically overnight. You know you can do so much on a mill and a lathe to a certain degree of precision but when it comes down to that last tenth, it's all, you know, you've got to have the tools to do it. I think I've definitely got a style of my own. It's just developed from the things I enjoy looking at and the materials I enjoy using, really. Um, I was born probably a hundred years too late, um, at least. Anything old, anything rusty, anything covered in grease, and oh, I love it. It's what gets me going. Truly care about something, and you, 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 know, you want it to be right. Then yeah. <laughs> have a go at this. See if you can. <laughs> it's getting difficult now because this is. Um, how can I word it? And when it matters, it matters. Yeah.